Welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to a short and rather interesting video. I've got a 1960 Gibson ES330 TDC. Uh, T stands for thin and then it's a double pickup cutaway. And it's beautiful. Came in for some repair work because, well, 50 odd year old guitars require some repair sometimes. Uh, the point of this video is, it's interesting. Basically, at some point, the fretboard wear from the uh, uh, country picking that was going on on this in the past was scraped out by somebody else, filled with a nasty mess of epoxy or epoxy-like. It, it, hell, it might have been cascamite or something strange. Uh, but in the process of filling, whoever it was scraped out these beautiful dips and then filled it with the stuff. We've taken it out because it looked horrible and we're left with something that also looks horrible. The evidence of where the former owner or a former owner played has been accentuated and just made to look fairly crappy. I don't have a problem with it being there. It doesn't really affect the, the, the play, but it does need to look properly vintage. And uh, well, that's the way we're coming today. I'm gonna see how I can fake years and years and years of playing where. Just for interest, uh, we have, uh, we made a new nylon nut for this instrument. We refretted her and, uh, well, funny enough, here is the, uh, the original pickguard Bakelite. It's shrunk weirdly and uh, we had to make a new uh, Bakelite pickguard. The rest of the instrument is absolutely just gorgeous and the wear. <sighs> Look at this playing wear. I love the area around the edge of that uh, uh, that F hole there. I want to replicate this on one of my guitars actually, come to think of it. Beautiful instrument that uh, wasn't in a playable condition really before we got it. Uh, it's going home and will be very, very playable. Now, what tool do you use to simulate dozens and dozens of years of string wear? I kind of wanted to get a string and make a tool out of that, but I don't have the uh, time. And it's not actually string wear necessarily, it's probably fingernails. So I've pulled out a few gunstock checkering tools from my collection and oh, let's go. So the trick is I'm trying to essentially scrape away some of the, some, some fake grain lines or some of the softer wood uh, in here, uh, which is what it would look like. Give it a little bit of texture, a little bit of uh, veracity, verisimilitude. So it's not gonna be perfect because here somebody's gone through and there are, there are issues. There are issues indeed. Very annoying. This is an old diamond file that uh, some uh, gunsmith, gunstock carving person uh, bent into a dog leg and, and sharpened to, into a graving tool actually. I'm not removing very much material. I'm just trying to make something that's obviously been worked on. And I'm trying to take it and make it look like it's uh, at least relatively, relatively as it would have been. Now, another non-standard tool is this. It is a, a fiberglass pen. I think it's used for PCB uh, work or etching, something like that. Uh, and it's a fairly useful little tool for for polishing, for cleaning, for deburring uh, in places like this. So we now have the texture. It's relatively subtle. All we need to do is add uh, a few decades of uh, finger grease and stuff. Or maybe fretboard restorative. Crimson fretboard restorative.
and there you go. Now, it's a subtle difference, and it's not very deep what I've done, but in the light you can see that there's lines, you can see the grain lines, whereas on the other ones it's, it's shiny, it looks like somebody sanded that and put that in on purpose. Uh, having the inconsistencies makes it look and feel like something that happened through normal uh, wear and tear. Right, so I'm going in just uh, slightly adjusting the, uh, uh, the peripheries of that, of that shape. And I'm going to do the other ones. And it, it, this is a relatively quick job, but it's this sort of uh, level of detail that takes a guitar uh, from, hey, something that's been messed around with to, uh, oh, that looks all right. Um, now, we could have, and the option was there, we could have taken uh, some Brazilian rosewood and, and tried to fill and tried to make this look like an untouched pristine fretboard it's possible but uh, well not easy but also not not true to the guitar not true to the life it's had hell some people might even argue that uh, me fixing these badly done repairs is not true to the uh, the instrument itself and i want to hear what your opinion is what do you think let me know in the uh, in the comments So the tool is naturally falling into the soft sections. It's not particularly sharp. I'm not gouging with it too much. Um, it's giving me a fairly natural approximation of what I expect to see and what I have seen in similar models. So we didn't film the entire process of this repair, making the new scratch plate or uh, removing the glue from these uh, divots, actually. Uh, are you interested in more of this sort of content on the channel? Let me know. Uh, let me know. It's, uh, this was a, a strange enough thing that I thought, oh, we should probably film this at this point. Uh, nobody needs to see another refret, I know that. Uh, Label Crown and Polish, LCP, uh, is banned. But this sort of stuff, it, uh, it could be fun. So this here is approaching completion. You can see as the light moves over it, uh, it's obvious that the fretboard has been uh, re-leveled, uh, re uh, and that's also not, uh, not a problem given the age of the guitar, etc., etc. But uh, it's also obvious internally that the, uh, that the cavities are fairly, fairly rough inside. So I'm now going to take a <laughs> heavily abused medium fret polishing rubber from Crimson and I'm just going to burnish the inside of these uh, of each of these divots because that's what it would have been it would have been a fingernail scratching and and playing where over the years uh, burnishing it relatively smooth just not perfectly smooth like uh, we saw at the beginning of this video and I use fret rubbers to uh, to polish fret boards as well as frets on a regular basis. They're lightly abrasive, they don't leave scratches in the wood, they're far finer than that. But they are very, very useful. Very useful indeed. Okay, then uh, the whole thing, including the fretboard with a super fine fret rubber, avoiding the frets because they're already polished. Um, although it is super fine, so not too much of an issue.
and we're starting to feel like something that's been going on for a long time. Yeah, there we go. Well, that was fun. I'm gonna leave this to cure overnight, take a bunch of photographs and some B-roll, but uh, let me know what you think. Is this overkill? Is this sacrilegious? I'm removing even more material. Should I have tried to fill it? Should I have left it as it was? Uh, should I now also be thinking about staining the, uh, uh, the new nylon nuts to make, to make that look old? Uh, Lots of questions. Thanks for watching. Have a good, uh, have a good one. Goodbye.